Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Dreams Unlimited Travel Podcast. My name is John. My name is John Magi. Believe it or not, <laughs> mine isn't. How oh, is it? <laughs> my name is Kevin Close. How are you today? Excellent. Uh, we are coming to you from our backyard in Central Florida once again. Um, we are recording this during our current stay-at-home lock-in-place. What is it called? Order that we have going on here. Stay at home, I think, is it? Right. Well, and our- we are not socially distant. However. If either one of us has anything, it's shared at this point. <laughs> really. Um, uh, we live in Osceola County, Florida, and Osceola and Orange County are uh, under a lockdown order. So unless you have an essential job, you can't go outside, but we don't go outside anyway, so it doesn't really matter to us. We've been at this for 20 years. Yeah. All right, so this past week, Kevin has been putting out on Twitter that we will take your questions um, to do on a show, on this show. And we've gathered a bunch of them. We have a lot. We had a really lot of questions come in, some great questions. Uh, we've cl- collected them all in case we need to do another show or a show later on. We will definitely do that. We are going to try to stay on travel related questions, but there's a couple of silly, fun questions in there too um, that we will throw in. If we, what, did you shake your head? No, they're not silly no, and fun? No, I, we're not going to stick on travel related stuff. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. So apparently it's a free for all. <laughs> all right. So we're going to uh, start out and I'm going to start with the first question. And this one comes from Amanda and Peter. First trip you're going to take when all of this is eventually over. I assume they mean as once eventually uh, our quarantining is over. You're going to go on... I'm going to Alani. Oh, Alani. Oh, you know what? I don't listen. I feel some people might be listening. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go back to Alani. Alani is serene. Alani is a quiet place. I have a good time in Hawaii. And that would be my first choice. So we're going to go from socially distancing in Orlando to socially distancing in Hawaii. I'm okay with that. We're okay with that. I Actually, am... tell people where our very first trip is. Knock wood, fake wood. As long as, you know, things clear up by that time, we actually have a trip on the books. Where are we going? Our first trip is a backstage magic trip. No, that's not true. Oh, we're going to go to New Jersey. That's right. Well, that's another place (laughs) I love. I, um, my first trip, if this all works out, we're going to go stay in Stone Harbor for a week. I grew up going to the Jersey Shore. I love the Jersey Shore. If I was wealthy enough to have two homes, I would have my house here and I would have a house on the Jersey Shore. All of you who are in New Jersey jonesing to be in Walt Disney World, Kevin is jonesing to be in New Jersey. I am. That's our first trip uh, trip on the books. We're going to visit some family. We're going to spend some time there in Knockwood. Hopefully, let's all fingers crossed that this is done by then and we get to travel. But then after that, we have a backstage magic to California. That ends. When it ends, we're leaving for Alani for a week. Fingers crossed. Exactly. Fingers and toes crossed. So, um, definitely, you know, we have trips on the books. We want to travel. We're looking forward to traveling. I think by that time we're going to be so desperate to go, we will. But I want to say this, too. You know what's really weird? One of the first things I want to do is I want to go to Walt Disney World. I want to go to, I think I want to go to the Magic Kingdom. And I know that's weird because we don't usually go. We've kind of got to that point in our lives where it's, you know, very close by. We can go whenever we want. And we've kind of stayed away for a while. But I think kind of like it needs to be celebrated. Yeah, hugged. It needs to be hugged. I think that's a good way to put it. We need to celebrate it and go. Now, I'm going to tell you this. I'm not going the first date opens because every wacko with a camera and a vlog (laughs) is going to be there. We don't know any of those people, (laughs) do we? Those people. But they're going to go and they're going to get that, you know, reopening day excitement. But we'll definitely be there. I promise I'll never take a picture of a cupcake. I promise. Oh, yeah, that's not true. Uh, (laughs) All right. Let's move on. Our second question. Our second question is from Scott. What SIM card do you and John use for traveling? My Verizon account charges $10 per day for a travel pass, which only gives me 500 megabytes, megabits, megabytes of data. Do you only use... Uh oh, I get, I don't have my reading glasses on. Do you only use Wi-Fi calling apps like WhatsApp, FaceTime, etc.? Okay, this is a little bit of a complicated uh, answer, but I'm going to give you the high-level current answer now. First, um, we have both have AT and T as our carrier here in Florida, and AT and T has I think it's called World Pass, but I'm not sure. 
correct, you, something like that. If I'm wrong, don't write to me because I don't care. But the <laughs> <laughs> world is made me snort. So <laughs> it's this thing on your phone for ten dollars a day. I get Kevin and I get the same self service that we have at home, including calling, and data, and texting. At when we travel anywhere in the world, that would cover it. Um, it's ten dollars. We ten dollars each. So as soon as you go someplace, it automatically switches on, and you automatically have your cell phone to use the way you want to use it when you arrive in your destination. And so far, we found it's worked all over the world. Now, for instance, it will not work on a cruise ship. Well, I'm going to get to that. I'm sorry. Yeah, let me let me go through this first. That's oh, okay. the a more complicated answer than this. Okay. You actually can get it to work on a cruise ship, but you have to pay for it. And it's ridiculously expensive. But so we've been to all over the world, as I've mentioned, and anywhere we went, even China and Japan and uh, Italy and Spain and Australia, any place we go, it works. And what I like about that is it just works. I'm the kind of guy who I just want to have it work. I don't want to go through switching out SIM cards and all this other stuff. Exactly. We also use our phones and our email a lot for work, we even do. when we're traveling. And there's another option here for you. What you can do is when you get to your destination, look for a place. Sometimes there's a kiosk that sells a SIM card. And for a certain amount of money, it might be 30 days or it might be a certain amount of data. You pop that in and you're good to go uh, on your vacation. This, what we use is much easier than that. We've done that whole thing where you swatch out, swap out the SIM cards, but then you got to keep track of your SIM card. And you got to worry I've about I've walked around that. Paris looking for a Vodafone store. More than once. Um, but going back to what Kevin said on the ship, you can, through this AT&T World Connect or whatever they call it, there's additional charge we could pay to make phone calls on a cruise. It's really expensive, and they still charge you uh, per minute. Your best bet on a cruise ship is to turn your cell phone off, connect to their wi turn your cellular data off, connect to their Wi-Fi and use Wi-Fi calling. I actually put my phone in airplane mode. Yep, put in airplane airplane mode, connect to the ship's Wi-Fi. There was a cruise where I didn't and we got like an $800 mm, phone bill. Yeah, it was bad. That was a bad return home. <laughs> um, so what I want to say about this is that what's really nice is the cruise ships now, pretty much every cruise line has an app. And the app does, depending on the cruise line, does some really great stuff. It keeps track of your schedule tells you when your dining is, tells mm -hmm. you when your shows are, but they also include a free texting part. So you can put the app on, you don't have to buy the Wi-Fi because you're connected to the ship's Wi-Fi to use the app for free, and you can connect to other folks in your party through texting for free. I kind of feel like if you're going to go through all that work, just turn your phones off. Just relax, just turn your phone off. We have to do it we like to do it. We have to stay connected, but on a cruise, just turn it off and enjoy it. Okay, that's enough of that. No, no, I got one more thing I want to say. Okay. I want to talk We're about losing people. I know we are losing people. That's okay. With iPads, iPads, you can go in. You, and you paused for dramatic. Effect. I did. <laughs> I paused for laughter. <laughs> Unfortunately, there wasn't any. For iPads. For iPads. Dot dot dot. There is an option for you to go into your data settings and buy like a 30-day package for your cell service on your iPad, not Wi-Fi, this is different, to work for 30 days in a foreign country. That's something we've done for Kevin quite a bit. Because um, you don't always know if you're going to have good Wi-Fi. You don't always know, you know, we might be on a bus going from place to place and Kevin needs to check his email, so we'd rather have him have or that Twitter. access. <laughs> That's why I'm paying $800 on a cruise. So you can check Twitter. <laughs> All right, so that's a lot of information, but the bottom line is check with your carrier, check with whoever your cell phone carrier is, and see if they offer this option. $10 a day is not bad. What I love about the AT&T one is it's automatic. As soon as you step foot in the foreign country, a little message comes up, says you are now using this service, it's going to charge you $10, but you can do anything you want during that day. All right, our next question. This is one from Donna. Donna says, I'm so glad you're doing a show. Oh, thanks, Donna. We appreciate that. Been missing you all. One question I do have for you is, dot, dot, dot. 
Have you heard of Walt Disney Am World? Am I supposed to be applauding? <laughs> no, you're just supposed to be... Pensive? You're supposed to be pensive. Have you heard of Walt Disney World or Disneyland hotels are taking reservations during this summer? I have an up-to-date answer. Excellent. Teresa just emailed that she is having trouble booking dates this summer and she is on hold and she's been on hold for quite a while. So the answer is things with what's going on right now change and I don't mean to be exaggerating but minute to minute. If you tell somebody something one minute and 15 minutes later that answer could be completely obsolete. Right now Disney has decided that their everything will be closed indefinitely they won't put an end date on it so i don't know the i don't don't mean to sound like we don't know but we don't know um just let me sure people know we're recording this what's today's date the 28th saturday the 20 yeah saturday the 28th so as of saturday the 28th this is what we know um all disney parks are closed indefinitely there's no date to reopen as kevin mentioned we, all hotels and DVC properties are closed also. Alani is closed. Hilton Head, Vero Beach, right. all of the parks, all of the hotels here in Orlando, Disneyland. I even just saw um, a crawl on the TV that said uh, vacation rentals have been suspended for two weeks. So Cuff property. We own a vacation rental. Fortunately, the folks who are going to be in there have all decided to cancel and rebook and do what they have to do. But... Um, yeah, so because it wouldn't be fun to come to Orlando and stay in a house that wasn't yeah. yours. And even these, uh, if you stay in a place where there's a, an association, even their services have to be closed. So um, the villas at Seven Dwarfs Lane, where we own our uh, rental properties, the we got a message that the gym is closed and the pool area is closed and they, we have a tiki bar the tiki bar is closed so there's pretty much nothing to do but i do want to just amend what you said about not being able to book we use as a travel agency we have a portal that disney lets us book under it's basically the same thing consumers get to use but it attaches our travel agency to us and gives us reporting functions and things like that and as of today some agents are saying they can pick dates from April 13th and later, but when they get to the last step, they're being given an error message. So we don't know if it's Disney systems being funky. We don't know if it's they've somehow just turned everything off, but we're able to pick dates. I do want to say this. Please, please, please don't hesitate to put in for a quote through our website, dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. You can ask for a no obligation quote. Our agents will work on it and they'll come back and tell you, listen, we can't book this now. We can book this now and then go forward from there. But please don't let any of this sort of persuade you from thinking about a future trip. We can also book uh, Adventures by Disney. Yeah. Right. We just heard that, well, not just, it was this past week, that uh, all May Adventures have been canceled. Mm -hmm. But Kevin is moving people forward. Other agents are moving people to future dates. So Adventures by Disney. There's a couple of options if you have an adventure. There's a couple of things we can do. They still want you to travel. Adventures by Disney is still putting on these further trips. So they're still available for folks. to. You can go places. But again, we're all sort of up in the air about what's going to happen. And I also want to say one more thing. Of course you do. I know. I've always got one more thing. And that is that if you're working with a Dreams agent and you're anxious about a trip that you already have booked through them, uh, obviously contact them. But we do ask for your patience because, again, we are trying to figure this out as we go along. Uh, Disney's releasing information before they share it with us and you know we're trying to figure it out and you know are there going to be refunds or will you rebook or what's going to happen so just we do ask for your patience your travel agent is your advocate let them advocate for you okay i agree all right that's it for that topic um what's the next one Teresa says, what's your favorite local restaurant? My husband and I love live in Ohio. Oh, gosh, i got to pull this closer. My husband and I live in Ohio, but have a home in Windermere. Our kids are cast members. Where should I go? We tried Linda's La Cantina based on Pete's praises. Where else should we try? Uh, we've got a list. I was just going to say, I have a favorite restaurant in a lot of different categories. Let's go for... Um 
There's another question about on Disney property, so let's stick to off Disney property for right now. Teresa wants to know about off Disney property. Excellent, so tell her what you go for. You do your first one. I think our favorite restaurant is a special occasion restaurant. This isn't the kind of place that John and I think, oh, it's Wednesday, let's go out to dinner. That would be Bull and Bear at the Waldorf in Orlando on Disney property. It is, it is a lovely setting. It's got an old clubby library feel to it. And they know it's in a theme park area. So the uh, your wardrobe is whatever you're wearing. Dress code. Than, your dress code. Right? That's the word I was looking for. They don't want you in a, in a bathing suit and flip-flops. They don't want you in a bathing but... suit or a beach cover-up. But it's old-fashioned comfort food elevated. And it is pricey. This but is, we think it's worth it. This is considered a, a high-end steakhouse. High-end. They specialize in steak, but they have some incredible dishes. They've got other stuff that's fantastic. This, again, Kevin said, special occasion restaurant. This is a multi-hour yeah. dinner. You're, you're there gonna, for the night. You're going to be there for the night. But it is, in our opinion, worth every penny. <clears throat> Please give it a try if you can. Got another one? I do. I ha there's a, a, a very small Italian restaurant about five minutes oh, from... So before we go on... The, wall, the, the bull and bear, I know, I keep doing this to you, but get used to it. Um, I am. The bull and bear is in the Waldorf Astoria that's in the Bonnet Creek Resort, right, quote unquote, off of Disney property. So if you're traveling by... Um, you can't get there unless you're on Disney property. Right. So if you're over by Disney Springs in that area, you would get to the Bonnet Creek Resort and pretty much go almost all the way to the back, and that's where the Waldorf is. That. I just want to make sure people know where these places are. All right. Um, Google Maps. Um, <laughs> oh, that is condescending. <laughs> the next one is a small family-owned restaurant. It's an Italian restaurant. It's really hard to find um, because it's not on a main street. You really are going to have to Google Map this, and it's called Pepperoncino. P-E-P-E-R-O-N-C-I-N-O. -E -E these are some folks directly from Italy, and if you've ever been to Italy, this restaurant reminds me of actually eating in Italy. They have a couple of tables, they have a bar that seats like four people, and they have a little uh, section that sells Italian food, pastas, sauces, drinks. So it's very much like eating in a restaurant in Rome or any place. And the husband and wife are the chefs, and it is, it is good old fashioned Italian food elevated a little bit big open kitchen so you watch them cook um they do have a second section they purchased the, the they rented the store next to theirs and they've opened sort of a pizzeria uh -huh. where they're specializing in pizza their pizza's good their other food is much better in my opinion you i agree go, um things like chicken parm and there's usually a specialty dish that's really good so really excellent food and really sweet sweet people so pepperoncino did you say where it was it's uh, off Sand Lake Road. It's next to a home goods store. In the Dr. Phillips section. It's behind the big huge restaurant out on this street is called Bellagio. It, you have to go up a side street and behind a building and into a parking lot. You really should Google it. It's going to be easier. But I'm told once you do that, it's very easy to find. I'm also a big fan of La Luce. Mm -hmm. La Luce is uh, in the Hilton in the Bonnet Creek Resort area a little bit further up than um, the Bull and Bear and the Waldorf. And They're again, next to each other. Yep, just different different hotels, different properties. And what you've got there is you've got Italian cuisine, but you've got a little bit more, I, I don't know, the other place you go to I consider more rustic Italian. This is more a little bit more upscale Italian where they try some fancier things. However, in my opinion, they have the most incredible pizzas. These incredible flatbread pizzas. They have a prosciutto one that I love. However, they have my he's, favorite. I was just going to say, he's not really telling you the truth. It, they have my favorite thing ever that I would go there for every single day if I could. We have. They do fried olives. And what are they? Marcona almonds. Marco, Marcona almonds. And I'm going to describe the fried olives. They're fried in a batter that contains anchovies. And if you think about that, a lot of people go, ooh, ooh anchovies. It, it gets, once it's cooked, it gets a nutty, salty flavor. So we get an order for the table, and then we get an order for John, and we put up police tape so that no one crosses that boundary. 
That is true. <clears throat> On more than one occasion, I've said, let's just go there for olives. <laughs> and we have. I've, and on other occasions, I've been at the Bull and Bear and asked them if they would go to La Luce for all. They will not. They will not do that. All right, I've got one more. Let me just give one piece of advice. I know, I've always got one more thing. You do? I'm going to give one piece of advice. For both of these restaurants, you can park in the parking structure. However, if you eat in the restaurants in these hotels, let the hotel valet your car because they will validate. So you're parking for free. A lot of folks don't know this and they wind up parking in the parking structure and it's a bit of a walk and inconvenient. It's, it's a walk. So let them valet your car, then you get it validated, you park for free except for a couple bucks to tip the valet. But these restaurants that we're talking about are kind of, I would describe, Bull and Bear's really high end, but the other two, uh, Pepperoncino and La Luce, they're still what I would consider a nice evening out. They're, yes, they're, sure. they're kind of, if I was using Dollar Stein, Bull and Bear would have three, these two would have two. There's also a favorite that we used to go talk about all the time, and we stopped for a while, and I'm not sure why, but in the last couple of months, I think we've been there a dozen times. We kind of rediscovered it for some reason. We have. It's Celebration Town Tavern in Celebration, Florida. It is friendly. It comes across as a neighborhood bar, restaurant. There's an extensive menu. They feature fresh New England seafood flown in fresh a couple of times a week. But don't let that stop you if you're not a seafood fan. I have someone who doesn't eat any seafood and she always finds something that she loves. So, hi Kristen. Um, so this menu is huge. You can get everything from hot dogs and beans to surf and turf. Right. And it is, there's indoor seating, there's outdoor seating. It's friendly, it's comfortable. It's a great place to go when you've got a big party. I would suggest if you have a big party or you're going on a Friday or a Saturday night that you do call ahead seating. All that means is that when you get there, you're put at the top of the list for the next table. Uh, you forgot the best thing. What's the best thing that they have? They have the best clam chowder, the best New England clam chowder in the world, bar none. And on Friday, they have lobster chowder. I mean, I'm even hesitant to tell people that because I don't want to wait. Um, <laughs> we don't want you. You know how we went to La Luce for uh, uh, for <clears throat> fried, olives. Fra fried olives. We've gone on a Friday night to uh, Celebration Town Tavern for Just lobster for chowder. Yeah. Um, again, I have a few things I'd like to add. If it's Just okay. one more thing. Just one more thing I'd like to add um, is that first of all, they are pet friendly. So mm -hmm. if you've got a dog, please bring them. They've got an outside area where people eat with their pets all the time. You do have to eat outside. It's and weather permitting, that's fine, but your dog is not welcome in the restaurant. Right. But it's still a great option for folks mm -hmm. who have a pet. It is. So bring your pet, feel free to do that. The other thing too is it is it has a very large bar outside. There's also uh, seating around it to have dinner, but there's a huge bar. So if you are looking for just a place to go and have a couple of drinks, and if you're a sports fan, Big screen TV, you know, they're showing whatever sports cabal that they have that day. I don't I know. Tell them what's playing. I don't know what's playing. There's a bar inside and a bar outside. Sure, sure there's curling and things like that. They I have, know. I think they, I don't drink beer. I think they have 100 beers available. Um, they have a club. If you drink all 100, not at one time, you get a mug. Um, so, again, we want, I don't want you to think it's, you know, you know, just a restaurant, just go for seafood. It's really a great overall place to go. Very good pricing. Yeah, it's Huge not choice. expensive. And it, there's something for everybody. And the food's good. I think that's the bottom line. If you are a northerner and you miss haddock and clams and scallops, the things you would get in the northern part of the country, this is the place to go and it's right near Disney. They're open for lunch and dinner. so and they're open seven days a week, and there is no dress code. That is true. One of the great things is if you are either now a local or you are someone that's saying at Disney has a car, um, <clears throat> the Orlando area, that area specifically, has really become um, a food mecca almost. I mean, there are so many restaurants and so much different kinds of cuisine available. It's really sort of this embarrassment of riches for us now in Orlando. So we tend to go to the same restaurants over and over again because we love them, but there's a lot out there. Um, We're gonna move ahead, Neil. 
Well, there's one more thing I do want to mention. I know one more thing. What about our favorite Mexican? We've talked about this before. It's a chain restaurant, but we think it's worth mentioning to folks. Are you talking about Tijuana Flats? I am. Tijuana, Tijuana Flats. Flats is a chain. They're all over Orlando. There's one a couple of minutes from Disney on Sand Lake Road. And this is not changing the face of Mexican cuisine. We're talking all of the basics. However, it's fresh. It is really inexpensive. John and I can roll out of there for $25 and like not be able to move, we're so stuffed. The other thing is they do things that I don't think any place else does. They have a Tijuana Trio. It's uh, queso, it's guacamole, and it's salsa, and it comes with chips. I think it's $4.99 or $5.99, I apologize, it's one of those. And they'll refill the salsa, queso, and guacamole for you and give you more chips. So, big bird just flew overhead. It co caused like a whole shadow. <laughs> it was like uh, a pterodactyl it was. shadow. One of our Sorry. Um, yeah, so it's like, you know, I mean, you could be really, really cheap and just get that and pig out and still be full. But they've got great tacos and burritos. and They have a hot sauce bar that's listed from mildest to oh my god don't eat this yeah. so and again for 25 dollars two people can have a whole feast i wanted you to mention that one because i think we've been able there's a lot and i think we've been able to give you if you're looking for high-end specialty restaurant bull and bear middle of the road pricing and then you know tijuana flats very very inexpensive um I would say it's like fast food pricing for not fast food, for really well prepared. Yeah. Food. And they all just so do it all to go, too. Awesome. In this situation, there's one right near our house, and we are frequent visitors to their takeout. So. Okay, I need a drink. Let's do one more. I'm going to come in with. Excellent. Let's do one more question. How about travel Walt Disney's restaurant on Disney property? And then we have restaurant, or we could do another show. All right. He's got two parts to his, they have two parts to their question. The right pronoun. <coughs> All right, I'll read the question. <coughs> In three, two, one. Excellent. All right, we have one more question we're going to cover in the show. We've got a whole bunch more we're going to do, so we'll record a second show for you guys and put that out there. But for now, this will be our last question, and this comes with, comes with, this comes from Travel Walt Disney. Uh, favorite restaurant on Disney property? I think I know the answer, LOL. Also, what's your favorite Broadway play? So what's our favorite restaurant on Disney property? Right now it's Haleo. I agree. Uh, and I think Jose Andres, Jose Andres is my hero. Um, Located in Disney Springs. It's across from the movie theater. It's right across from Splitsville. And it is all tapas. There are some main entrees. We've done a review on this, a show about it, so I'm not gonna belabor the point. Uh, I think the food is good. I think the food is different. I think it's a great place to go with a family and try different things. And they will allow you to try different things and then revisit things that you love. Again, I think well, I, I am hugely happy to support Jose Andres and the work he does. He is a hero in the world and I think we should support him. Besides that, the food's really good. Food's awesome, we love it. Um, I will point out that um, eating this way can be very expensive. It can. It can get very expensive because you're kind it of. It could just be out. <laughs> it's true. Most people get out for 20 bucks. <laughs> what happens is you wind up getting these small plates and then going and revisiting or eating something else that's mm -hmm. a small plate. So it's not a cheap restaurant for sure. <laughs> but it's uh, my favorite. Right. And it seems to be one we go back to often. Again, to use a phrase I used for the last question. Walt Disney World with Disney Springs, again, is now an embarrassment of riches for food options. Um, we go to quite a bit. We find ourselves going back to Jose Andres, but another one of our favorites is uh, Marimoto. Marimoto has the most incredible ribs in the world. I dream about their ribs. They're so good. 
I would also say um, the Brown Derby. We always have a good meal at the Brown Derby, and I kind of like that old Hollywood atmosphere. The Brown Derby is funny because we forget about it for a while, and then we find ourselves in uh, the studios and we go, oh, let's go to Brown Derby. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, I, again, there's a, a lot of issue around 180 day reservations and not being able to get to your favorite restaurants. We seem to have good luck. Mm -hmm. I think probably because we eat it off times, probably because we're flexible, you know, we said it was just two of us and we'll sit wherever you want us to sit. But we seem to be able to get a seat fairly easily at the Brown Derby last minute. Um, good food, we go back there and we always are surprised that it's so good. I also want to mention Homecoming. We haven't, we haven't been there in a while. I know, we gotta go. We gotta go. It's that's, hard to get into. That's another one I love. Yeah, that's one, unfortunately, it's hard to do like a last minute walk in for. We've tried a couple times and you can't do it, so we wind up going to Haleo. Um, they have really great uh, fried chicken. I love their fried chicken. What's your favorite dessert there? They have something called hummingbird cake. And I'm kind of upset that it's closed because I could use a piece of hummingbird cake. <laughs> really? I think it's medicinal. Couldn't we all use a piece of hummingbird mm, cake? Right? Exactly. Um, what else? What um, else? As far as Disney restaurants? Yeah, Disney restaurants. Those are our favorites. Yeah. What's your favorite Broadway play? I'm curious to hear your answer. That's my favorite broad Broadway play. You go first. Uh -oh, <laughs> I asked I, you first. Because I think I actually have to think of one. I, I think we've been lucky enough to see some really spectacular stuff. Yeah, that's true. We watched Glenn Close in Sunset Boulevard and sat there Kevin dumbstruck. Kevin got to meet Glenn Close I did. after Sunset Boulevard. There's a picture up out there, out there of me looking absolutely horrified. I don't know what happens when I meet famous people, but all of a sudden I look like <laughs> the deer in the headlights and I don't smile. But We're going to save that story for a travel story. Oh, I think. Gosh. That was a yeah. funny story. Um, I got to see Glenn Close in a full-blown version of Sunset Boulevard many years ago. And then recently a bunch of us went back and saw the sort of stripped down bare bones staging of it. And I can't tell you how good she was. I don't think most of the people went in thinking that this was going to be anything more than a good night. And I don't know that anybody came out thinking they hadn't seen greatness. Uh, we got to see Bette Midler in Hello, Dolly. Yeah. I think that's really good. And he had a chance to meet Bette Midler. I did. And look like a deer in the lights who was crying. That was in a different place. What's your favorite? What have you seen? I just racked my brain and I'm going to say, of all the shows I've seen, which is a lot, very lucky uh, to have seen a lot, I, th I think the one that sticks with me the most is Act of God with Sean Hayes. <laughs> funny, funny, funny. Sean Hayes is someone I admire very much. So getting to see him in, in something was fantastic. I got to meet Sean Hayes. You did? You guys meet Sean Hayes, yeah. I'm willing to stand outside and wait. I actually think I have a picture. I'm going to throw a picture of you meeting Sean Hayes. All right. Um, Broadway theaters are uncomfortable for the most part. They were built physically uncomfortable. Physically uncomfortable. Like the They're not built for big people. And my theory is if you're sitting in a Broadway seat and you are transported so you don't don't, are not aware that you're in a Broadway seat, you're seeing a good show. I think we both forgot something. It's probably the Broadway show we've seen the most. Mm -hmm. And if it was playing someplace where I could go see it tonight, that wasn't where I could sit six feet apart, I'd go see it again. I would watch Wicked anytime I could get a chance to. I love the show Wicked. Like the music, I like the story, I like everything about it. So that's probably the one we've seen the most. I think okay. we've seen it five times. Yep. Yep, definitely one of our favorites. I, um, one more thing. Okay, my ahead. turn. Oh, I also oh, got to see annoying. something in the late seventies. I got to see in a your late seventies. <laughs> it's a long night. Be careful. Um, in the late seventies, I got a half price ticket through the TKTS booth in Time or in Duffy Square, and I got to see a show called uh, Miss Margarita's Way. I doubt anybody's ever heard of it. It was a one-woman show, and it starred Estelle, Pars Estelle Parsons, and it was a diatribe against dictatorship. But she was a school teacher, and she had two pages of written dialogue that she had to cover to get the, the story across. However, the rest of the two-hour play was her riffing and ad-libbing and working with the audience. 
it was one of the most breathtaking things I've ever seen. And it's 40 years ago now, and I still remember it like it was yesterday. So, go to the theater. Sometimes it's really, really good. Sounds like something you'd make me do if you were mad at me. I also got to see Lily Tomlin do the search for signs of intelligent life in the universe. My, my mom was in a wheelchair. And back in, I think it still goes on, I don't have a wheelchair, but if you bought one full price ticket, the second person, the person in the wheelchair could go for $25. And even less. The person got a half price ticket and then the companion could go for $25. And I made my mother go see the search for signs of intelligent universe twice. Intelligent life in the universe. Yeah, that. And we were on the train to New York and we didn't have tickets for anything. And she looked at me and she goes, don't make me go see that again, okay? So certain things, you know, you go see them more than once. All right. So that'll do it for this episode. Um, we hope you've got some good information from our answers to your questions. Again, we have got a whole bunch of questions Kevin's been collecting. If you are interested in sending Kevin a question, Kevin at dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. These are something I would save for somewhere down the line. Right. We've got enough questions to do a second show. I think we're going to stop there with the questions for a while. That'll be two weeks worth of shows. Yeah, but still collect them so we can... That's what I said, for a show down the road. Sometime later on. Um, oh, wait, I have one more thing. Oh, no. I don't really so, um, <laughs> just want to end this by saying, again, if you are looking to plan a trip to Walt Disney World, Disneyland, on a, on a cruise anywhere, please keep Dreams Unlimited Travel in mind. We are still open. We are still up and running. All of our agents are working hard. Um, we truly appreciate your business. I know on other shows, uh, Pete has mentioned that if you've already booked on your own, you can transfer your reservation to us. Um, there are some rules involved and when you can do that, and we'll visit those as you bring them to us. But write to me, john at dreamsunlimitedtravel.com, and we'll see if we can transfer your reservation to us. If it's a cruise, you'll get our shipboard credit. If it's an Adventures by Disney, um, you will get our Adventures by Disney discount. And as always, you will get our agents who will help you out every step of the way, helping you plan your vacation and dealing with uh, unknown circumstances. Is there a bug on my back? No, but you're bugging me. Okay. And that'll do it for our episode. We, uh, we thank you very much for joining us, for listening and watching. We hope you have a great week. Please stay safe and please stay healthy. Bye.